Hello everyone and welcome back. I'm Duke Silver. Today we're going to be playing Odysseus. So Odysseus hero power is every three turns you get a free level three treasure. Um, so uh, naturally we're going to pick up a uh, an owl here. I do take owls very early, um, very often, uh, as I'm sure you've noticed. Like outside of uh, free prints, uh, owl is kind of my second uh, second go to, which uh, I think can be kind of a trap a lot of the times, just because like if you don't see it too like early enough, then they don't their stats just don't really add up. And spending the uh, gold on uh, on spells rather than just like items to bank gold is uh, generally not uh, not not so great. Um, but with Odysseus, I mean, again, you get a level three treasure every three turns, so I think uh, I think leaning into it more is actually is better on this hero specifically. Better than average, anyhow. Uh, but yeah, we start off. We I mean, we get the free print, freed prints, and we get a pair of demons here. We have taken a couple damage. We get our first level three treasure. We're gonna take the hat, of course, especially because there is another owl in the shop. Um, here we don't really have like a lot of great options. Like crew member can be fine in the right situations. Crew member has been changed. This is the beta. Sorry, sorry, I should have mentioned this is uh, this is these, this is on the beta, um, just like my last video. Um, and so crew member and duelist have both been changed to uh, to give their the summoned unit um, some amount of stats when they summon, and their base stats have been reduced. That's why crew member was a two one, and it gives uh, the character that it summons a plus one plus one. So I think that makes the crew member and duelist even a little bit better, um, and also uh, makes pirates a little bit more vi viable. I think there's been a couple uh, slight changes in pirates that make them more uh, more usable. Um, also, we're gonna take the uh, ice ring here after tripling our uh, our demon. And uh, of course, that's going to give us a spell every turn. And also, we got an old yellow bark, which is uh, going to give whatever anything that takes damage is going to get plus one attack during the fight, anyways. Uh, like the old, uh, wow, I can't even remember the name of the old uh, <laughs> of the SBB card that did it because I never took it. Darkwood Creeper, I think. Um, yeah, I never, I never played that card. I never played yellow bark, but I mean, with the ice ring, I figured you know we might as well give it a shot. Uh, it kind of works well with the high toughness of the plowman here. So, uh, so that's what we went with, and we took the pair. I mean, seeing another level three treasure, even though we're getting free ones, is still nice. Of course, there's still a couple that we would, a couple level three treasures that we'd be happy to pick up. Um, we want Seer Sphere, namely, and uh, I mean like Baby Mimic and uh, Magic Bean are all pretty premium as far as threes go. Speaking of Baby Mimic, we're gonna happily pick that up here, and if we can, if we can like uh, get a Baby Mimic onto a Seer Sphere, then uh, then we can kind of we can start to pop off a little bit if we can get some. A little, little bit more spell cost reduction. The one cost from the hat generally ends up not being quite enough. Wow, well, we're gonna pick up a spell book here though. That's gonna allow us to scale attack on something that isn't, uh, isn't a mage, anyways. There's our yellow bark triple. We're gonna sell a, sell a character here just to cast a spell, and we're gonna get this spell book onto uh, a freshly, freshly bought uh, acolyte. Just try and get that, uh, that attack up as quick as possible with the double yellow bark and the ice ring. Uh, that helps as well too manage a win there or manage a tie there to triple uh, unfortunately none of these are things that we want I mean there some of them are fine treasures but we, we really want to dig for the, the spell treasures so we're just gonna we're just gonna forego that just uh, take a skip that gives us a couple extra rolls to find uh, hopefully more than this uh, book mage that we just picked up uh, we just want to pick up all the book mages we can at this point um, but uh, a pair, of, a shop with a pair of huskies is a little bit too good to uh, to ignore. So we're gonna pick this, pick one up, and then uh, and lock for the other one. Of course, might have been worth it to just sell the egg for the uh, for the uh, item there. Uh, I believe that was a one cost item, and uh, at you at least get to put that stat on the board as opposed to holding a unit on your bench. They both sell for the same amount of gold, so just something to consider. And also locking for the second husky uh, works out well because uh, because we get like they both want to be in the same slot. So having them like what, staggered uh, between uh, one turn means that we can have them kind of chase each other around the board here. All right, we're gonna take uh, the scrolls. Uh, I was really really hoping for double caster, of course, with the baby mimic. Like that would have been um, the absolute best treasure. I mean, spell or broken spell reflector also would have been really good in this with this setup, but. I mean, two combat spells a turn is still fine. We do have to get out of the ice ring, which means it's, it's one less spell that we're casting a turn, which gets replaced by the two spells from the uh, the scrolls. But um, I think it's it's good. It's enough better that it's worth uh, worth the replacement at least. Get a second uh, second book mage here. We can finally get out of this yellow bark. 
Yellow Bark honestly served us pretty well though. Added quite a bit of attack to our board and uh, on characters that uh, that can use it relatively well. And we get to uh, we get to triple our acolyte here. Oh, we also did pick up a Crystal Sage. I shouldn't gloss over that. Crystal Sage has been uh, has been uh, buffed so that. Um, the non-upgraded version, um, whenever you cast a spell, gives all your mages plus two attack, and I believe the upgraded version is plus four attack now, so you get a lot more uh, just attack from uh, from your Crystal Sage. Alright, we, uh, again, we wanted the Double Caster or the Broken Spell Reflector, but Odin, Odin's Ravens is a, is a reasonable, uh, reasonable co uh, consolation prize here. It's going to give us a bunch of extra mana and more spell cost reduction. And hopefully we can get these slaves with the uh, crystal sage consistently. Uh, we put the spellbook there just to make sure that we can get it up to uh, up to that that threshold of being able to slay on every board. Um, also, uh, asceticism. I just scrolled, uh, went past that. We're never casting that here, but uh, but that does cost two mana now, so that's uh, that's a notable change. There is a, uh, a spellbook here. I think we're actually going to lock for it. We're just going to sell and open up a spot in the shop here just in case something relevant pops up there and we're still banking the same amount of gold just like a classic uh mid-game demon tempo board with a uh with a husky there we do manage a win pretty uh pretty handily though looks like they have a, a pirate map though so that is uh that is a concern Yeah, we really want to triple this uh, this book mage. We want to find spell reflector if uh, if if we can. Uh, there's another crystal sage, which I think we are gonna take. We we spent most of our gold on spell books, which uh, means we can't buy the crystal sage going into six. But I mean, because we're going into six, I do have a change of heart there at the, at the end. Even though I sold something to uh, to bank gold, but um, it was only because we're going into six. If that was like a triple for a crystal sage, I would probably keep it potentially. Uh, actually, maybe not since uh. On the beta, Merlin's staff has gone to uh, to level six for some reason. Um, even though the uh, the combat spells uh, on six are not uh, are not copyable, so I'm not sure what the uh, the need for for that that change was. Um, okay, we do get the Seer Sphere, so we're gonna get out of our hat. We're gonna hope rely on our Crystal Sage as well as the Odin's Raven for uh, for spell cost reduction, and this is just gonna let us see way way more spells. It's it's pretty late, but uh, but I still think it's worth it. I'm pretty, uh, pretty much priced into just being mages at this point. Although, like, if we were to trans- like, this would be a great spot to transition, like, if we were to pick up this, like, Angelic Commander and, uh, and move, uh, a spellbook, um, over to it, then, uh, then that would be a good way to, uh, to scale- scale those stats up to, uh, up to a good amount. Like, we're at 17, we're not- we're not exactly super weak here. But we've got- again, we've got the three spellbooks, so, like, an Angelic Commander, like, a good boy board would actually be, uh, would actually be pretty reasonable for us to transition to, but uh, I don't know, I just love playing mages, so, <laughs> so I just stuck with the mages anyways. Even though, generally, like, the scaling's just not, it's just not good enough. Um, as I mean, I'm sure, uh, sure all of you know and uh, have experienced. Uh, we are gonna take a fire mage, though. That can, uh, that can hopefully help us, uh, help us, help us fight certain comps. And uh, with the uh, plus two plus two spellbook on there, and uh, and the uh, crystal sage buffs, uh, we are going to be able to scale it up pretty quickly here. We sell for uh, for a couple extra spells there, just to try and get as much uh, much power onto the uh, fire mage as possible, which uh, we really needed to try and uh, try and take out this uh, these these cat queens. But unfortunately, unfortunately the cats are a little bit too big there. And uh, opponent has a pretty big summon chain, and with the uh, the the cat queen aura there it's just a little bit too much for us here we are gonna we are gonna take some more some damage here drop to 12 at least we took out, took out the golden characters so minimize damage a little bit at least we get to rummage so shop uh, shop full of spells here and just throw them all onto our board increasing the size of our fire mage by quite a bit pretty rapidly here now uh, we got a farmer's board it looks like that we're up against um, without any spell doublers, uh, Titan's Flowers is a little bit less exciting, I think. Um, especially this early in the turn. I mean, it costs 8 gold, so we can we, we only have like a certain window to even be able to cast it. And we are going to change heroes, and uh, Hercules is one of the one of the best ones that we could find. That just instantly doubles all the permanent stats on our board. So it makes or it doubles the stats of our uh, our Fire Mage and uh, and um, 
an apprentice owl here, so giving us a decent little power spike. Although this is a pretty strong board, and it's only it's only six point, I guess it's six point two right now, and uh, looks like they've just found uh, found a lot for their uh, their farmers board here, and we do take another loss, unfortunately. Although it looks like there was a bit of a, a bit of desync again, um, it looks like we didn't lose any HP there, so just a just a beta bugs, I guess. All right, and we got a big stars board here uh, on Trophy Hunter, so there that is very concerning. Stars is extremely good against mages. Like as you can see, we just don't have the uh, the health or uh, or really the means to uh, to combat them. I should have probably just taken that duelist and then put it on the board just as one extra point of contact. Um, instead, I took the roll, just trying to trying to get as many uh, as many uh, spells in the, or on or what do you call it as many spells cast as possible, but. Uh, it's just like with the with the the huge bluebell and the uh, the Oberons there, like those uh, those those stars are gonna fire off super super quick and just wipe out our entire board. Um, the, notably, the Uther is in front, so if we take out the Uther, they lose all their stats. Um, so that's something that we need to uh, we can potentially uh, fight them with. Um, well, as, as long as the Uther goes down and uh, and if we can get just get enough uh, enough bodies to uh, to absorb those stars, then. And that's one way that we can potentially uh, potentially fight the stars. Just looking for looking for spells to cast here. We're just gonna sell. We're gonna sell basically everything we can just to get as many stats in play as possible. This is the cat board. It looks like they did. Uh, I think I I got I got a scout on them, and they have uh, they have increased uh, the amount of cat queens on their board. So uh, yeah, the amount of aura stats they have is uh, is 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 quite a bit although they only have two summons I guess uh, we do manage to take out two of the cat queens um, we, they, we leave them with a golden one but fortunately uh, again fortunately they only had the two summons and it looks like it's not really increasing oh I guess I guess it is I guess the stats are going up as, uh, as those cats are being summoned but fortunately we've just uh, we've gotten enough uh, enough stats on our board from the uh, from dropping below six and getting another Hercules proc here to uh, um, to combat the, the the cat star or cat stats, uh, we still have to contend with the stars board. We are down to uh, down to the top two though, and uh, again, stars are just so so good against uh, against mages. So we have a real uphill battle here. Um, we are going to take Merlin's lesson. Basically, we're going to hope that uh, that we can take out that Uther with the Merlin's lessons. And uh, I don't know, it's possible I should have gotten rid of one of the other spell treasures and kept the uh, baby mimicked. Um, Merlin scrolls just to try and reduce the amount of uh, or increase the amount of chance that we actually take out that Uther, and then maybe uh, maybe the fireballs actually take out the rest of the board, because we do get we get six fireballs here. We did pick up a chair just because it's got shield. It's technically two points uh, or two extra points of contact. I um, mean, we're never gonna we're never gonna be able to race the uh, the bluebell stars. I don't think like we're not gonna be able to take out their whole board before the uh, stars fire off. But I figured. Uh, I figure if, if we can, if we can just get enough points of contact on the board, we can maybe absorb the spells, and then with all their with all their support stats gone, then uh, potentially um, one unit can uh, can kind of mop up the rest of what they're doing. That's why we're gonna take this cat box here. Um, put, I mean, putting it in front is a little bit awkward, just because there's it gets possible that uh, it just uh, just gets attacked into immediately, and we don't even get any value out of it, but. And also, we are reducing the amount of mages on our board. I went for the the um, Morphalot into the new U on the uh, Apprentice Owl, hoping to turn it into something that uses the stats better, or like has shield or something like that. But unfortunately, uh, we did turn into just a dwarf. <laughs> that doesn't really help us too much here. So now we just kind of kind of gotta let RNGs Jesus take the wheel here. And fortunately, even with even though we are only playing four mages, two of the uh, fireballs do go into the Uther, and we do manage uh, we manage to take it out. And uh, those those extra that that one shield, that one extra summon that we got, um, is just enough to absorb all those stars. And the uh, Crystal Sage cleans up, and we manage a win. Mages rarely ever beat stars, so uh, so that was a very very satisfying win for me. Um, and we did have another wolf locked in shop just in case we got another tie. We could kind of we could bury the cat box and the wolf, and I think that that further um, very much increases our chances of winning. Although again, we do need to be able to take out that Uther, so uh, 
maybe not maybe reducing the amount of fireballs with the uh, by turning the uh, apprentice owl into a dwarf um it might have uh or actually wait one of those one of those level five dwarves is a is a mage i think it might be it might be the tempe not the uh the smithy here um but yeah anyways uh i hope you enjoyed that uh please let me know in the comments if you did please leave a like comment subscribe uh i would very very much appreciate that i hope you have a great rest of your day uh apologies for missing my upload yesterday uh just yeah it's been super super exhausted lately having having a bout with insomnia um so thank you for your patience with that and uh anyways i have you hope you have a fantastic rest of your day and i'll see you tomorrow